Hello dear students, again, welcome to our English 10 class. Today, we are going to engage ourselves with the second lesson of this quarter. Are you ready? Have fun learning! This week's lesson is about linear and non-linear text. Our targets are, first, differentiate linear from non-linear text. Second, give examples of linear and non-linear text. And lastly, transcode linear to non-linear text and vice versa. The key difference between linear and non-linear text is their reading path. A reading path is the path or the way the readers take through a text. There are two paths as linear and non-linear text depending on this reading path. This lesson explains these two reading paths providing examples to give a clear understanding of the difference between linear and non-linear text. A linear text is a traditional text that needs to be read from beginning to end to make sense of the text. In a linear text, a reader can make sense of the text by reading sequentially, or meaning, from beginning to the end. It's typically the author of the text who decides the order of the text or its reading path. Generally, texts printed on paper are considered as linear text. Other examples are novels, poems, short stories, letters, and educational texts. All those texts we read from the beginning to the end are examples of linear text. Linear text is the most common type of reading. It is the traditional method of reading we are taught as children. However, linear text or linear reading is not always advantageous. It may prove disadvantageous when you are in a hurry and need to find some information quickly. This is because reading a linear text involves reading the whole text from the beginning to the end, and it may take a considerable amount of time to find the specific information you need. A nonlinear text, on the other hand, is not required to be read from beginning to end since its reading path is non-sequential. This only means that the reader can choose his own reading path. Nonlinear text is the opposite of linear text. As its name suggests, it is nonlinear and non-sequential. In other words, the readers do not have to go through the text in a sequential manner in order to make sense of the text. This type of text has many reading paths since it is the readers who decide the sequence of reading and not the author of the text. Nonlinear text has many definitions. Most people consider text with visuals or graphs along with it as examples of nonlinear text. Some examples of nonlinear text are graphic organizers, concept maps, diagrams, and charts. In fact, any text that is not read from beginning to the end falls into the category of nonlinear text. For example, consider an encyclopedia or a telephone directory. We do not read them from beginning to the end. We skim through them to obtain the specific information we need. It is also important to note that digital text or electronic text are also nonlinear text. These texts offer an array of constituents, such as mobile and immobile pictures, 
hyperlinks, and sound effects. Transcoding linear to nonlinear text and vice versa is a skill that one has to be familiar with since it can be used in our everyday lives. There will be times when you would have to transcode a linear text to nonlinear text to make it easier for other people to understand it, and a nonlinear text to linear text to have a detailed description of a certain topic. These are the simple steps in transcoding a linear text to nonlinear text. Step 1. Read the text and get the main idea. Step 2. Extract necessary information for a visual presentation. Step 3. Remember to use keywords or phrases only. Number 4. Classify information into categories. And number 5. Make sure to use correct nonlinear text to present information. Here are examples of nonlinear text. Cause and effect diagram emphasizes the connection between the different concepts and is sometimes called as the most beneficial organizer since it can be applied to all subject areas. This is more known as the fishbone or Ishikawa diagram. In this example, you may be able to consider that powerlessness, attention-seeking, jealousy and insecurity, experience of being bullied, emotional instability, and environmental influences are the possible causes of cyberbullying. Flow diagram or flow chart is a sequence chart that shows series of events in order. If you have a concept that has steps such as processes or sequence, the flow diagram is the most applicable textual aid organizer. This flowchart shows you steps to smarter studying. Venn diagram is used to identify, classify, categorize, and recognize similarities and differences of two or more subjects, ideas, thoughts, or concepts. This is called as the most commonly used textual aid, and this instructional tool can be found in teacher resource materials, examinations, handouts, and others. This is an illustration that uses circles to show relationships among things or finite groups of things. Circles overlap have a commonality, while circles that do not overlap do not show those traits. This is the most used textual aid. Mammals are warm-blooded, have hair or fur, breathe with lungs, and have live birds, while fish are cold-blooded, have scaly skin, hatch from eggs, breathe with gills, and live in water. But both mammals and fish are vertebrates and have a skeleton. Graphic organizers are visual displays that have key content information. These textual aids provide learners with structure for abstract concepts. These are usually created and designed for those who have trouble organizing information and thoughts. This hamburger paragraph is an example of graphic organizer. This paragraph has different parts. The topic sentence, the supporting sentence, and the concluding sentence. For example, I had a horrible sick day is the topic sentence of this paragraph. 
While I couldn't eat my favorite food, my mom told me to stay in bed all day. At school, I was missing the party are examples of supporting sentences. And I never want to be sick again is the concluding sentence. This picture shows the simplest way to understand the difference between linear and nonlinear text. In linear text, one must read from beginning to the end. There is only one reading path which is decided by the author. This typically includes printed text and it may take time to find the information readers are searching for. Some examples of linear text are novels, poems, letters, textbooks, and newspaper articles. Nonlinear text does not need to be read from beginning to the end. This has multiple reading paths. They are determined by the reader. This typically includes digital text, and it allows readers to find more efficiently. Some examples of nonlinear text are flowcharts, knowledge maps, and encyclopedias. Now that we have differentiated linear from nonlinear text and were able to identify a few examples of those, let us try to have some exercises. Transcode this linear text to nonlinear text using the most appropriate diagram. Sharks and whales are a classic example of two different animals revealing similar traits in the same environment. One of the similarities of these two marine animals is their habitat. They both live in the vast range of depth in their environment. They also have the same fin structure. They only have a single tail for propulsion. And because they are both large aquatic animals, they both consume large volume of food. However, sharks hunt for their food. Whales do not have this hunting tendency. Another difference of sharks to whales is their class. Whales are mammals while sharks are fish, but they both live in the ocean. Also, whales have bones while sharks only have cartilages. This is the most appropriate diagram that you may use in transcoding the previous paragraph. In the Venn diagram, you will be able to find out the different and similar characteristics of sharks and whales. Sharks are fish, they have cartilages, and they hunt for food. While whales are mammals, they have bones, and they have no hunting tendency. The similarities of sharks and whales are they both live in the water, they have the same fin structure, they have single tail for propulsion, and both of them are large aquatic animals. Now, can you transcode this nonlinear text into linear text? Let's try to do it. This is the possible paragraph that you may have 
from the non-linear text showed a while ago. Most of the Filipinos are seen and observed by their own way of dealing towards others. Filipinos possess both strengths and weaknesses. Some of these strengths are pakikipagkapwa tao, family orientation, joy and humor, flexibility and creativity, industry and faith, and religiosity. Having extreme personalism, extreme family-centeredness, lack of discipline, passivity and lack of initiative, colonial mentality, kanya-kanya syndrome, and lack of self-analysis and reflection are considered to be as weaknesses. Now, let's go back to our targets. Were you able to differentiate linear from non-linear text? Very good! Were you able to give examples of linear and non-linear text? Great! Were you able to transcode linear to non-linear text and vice versa? Awesome! Congratulations! Great job! Again, this is Teacher Dean. See you on our next lesson. Bye!